Turn over to Hebrews chapter 12. So we're going to try to finish up what we started a couple of weeks ago. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Thank God for everybody being here tonight. Amen. Amen. Be sure to come Sunday morning. It's Pentecost Sunday. We're going to have a fall. God is going to show up and the power of God is going to be here. If you have a need, God's going to meet it. Amen. 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 Come believe it. Come pray it up. God. Amen. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, I'll read to you. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. Yes, and let us run with patience the weight that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising his shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Church, we've been talking about this the last few weeks. We're, we're running a race. You're running a spiritual race. Okay? You don't just get born again and sit and wait for Jesus to come back and get to go to heaven. We are, we are supposed to be running a race, and our race is a, a, a fight of faith. Okay? And he says here, Lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. We've been talking about that. And he says, what be looking unto Jesus? He didn't say look at other Christians. He said look unto Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. We got a lot of time we can trouble when we start looking at other people and we start right. justifying what we're doing or not doing right. because of what somebody else is doing. Amen. No, we got to do what the Word says yeah. to do. Amen. Yeah. And he said, lay aside every weight. You've never seen an Olympic runner carrying luggage no. or talking on a cell phone when no. they run the race no. No. but a lot of us we are we love God with all our heart but we're carrying a lot of luggage we're carrying a lot of things that's holding us back and keeping no. us from being successful in our race and we talked about uh, warning against unbelief I'm just going to try to summarize some of the things we talked about in Hebrews chapter 3 and we talked about uh the cloud of witnesses is talking about here. So many people believe, and we talked about this, so many people believe that the cloud of witnesses here are people looking down from heaven watching what we're doing. And that's not what it's talking about here. We learned in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 that the dead do not know what's going on yeah. here. Come on now. I know I was going to upset a lot of people. Right. Well, my mama, I know she's watching over me. Yeah. My grandma is watching over me. Church, they are not watching They're over not. you. God is watching over yeah. you. Okay? Yeah. If they were in heaven and they could see what was going on down here and the mistakes that we were making, the heartache we were going through, it would break their hearts in heaven. And the Bible says there's no tears and no sorrow in heaven. Okay? So part of the, the blessing of being in heaven is not being able to know what's going on down Amen. here. And we also learn that those in hell know everything yeah. that's going on. They know, if you remember, the, the rich man would ask uh, Abraham to, to go send somebody to his brothers. Okay? He, he could see, he could hear, he had memory, he had taste, he had touch. He remembered what was happening before. So part of the punishment in hell is knowing all the things that are going on, all the things, every opportunity you had when God uh, gave you the opportunity to accept him and you rejected him. Amen. The cloud of witnesses talking about is in chapter 11, although by faith that did the exploits and the things they did are supposed to be examples to us to encourage us in our race that we're running. And also, Jesus, who has finished the faith, uh, finished the race, he is our main example. Okay? And all this is to encourage us as we're going through it. Like the scripture said, when you get faint, you get weak, remember what Jesus did for you. Remember what he experienced, what he went through, what he suffered, so that you and I could have the freedom and the ability to go to heaven yeah. today. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And we talked about the weight. There's a lot of weights, and in Colossians uh, chapter 3, he's talking about anger, math, uh, wrath, malice, filthy language. We can't run the race of faith if we're holding on to all those things that's going to trip us Come up. Come on now. Okay? That's why when you get born again, you get born again, but there's a process, church. You've got to learn to walk by faith. God is taking you somewhere, and on that trip that He's going, that He's taking you on, He's trying to help you to become more and more like Jesus and get rid of all those things that are going to hold you back. 
All the things that's going to hinder. All the things that's going to be an open door for the devil to come into your life. A lot of people say, well, why does God let this happen? We open doors. We have a free will. God can go over and shut that door. But a lot of times the devil will come and knock him. We'll go ahead and open that door. Who is it? God didn't do that. We did that. I can't run the race that God has put before me by faith if I'm all full of anger. If I'm full of anger... God's not going to be able to speak to me because I'm not going to hear him. I'm not going to be able to walk in faith because the Bible says faith working by love. So if I'm not walking in love and I'm walking in anger, then I'm hindering my faith walk. Do you hear what I'm saying? This right. yes. Okay? So these are some of the things we've talked about. We talked about the sin that so easy stares us is a sin of unbelief. And we talked about how so many times we think we need more faith and really what we need is less unbelief. Yes, right. Come on now. Okay? And we saw the warnings of um, against unbelief in Hebrews. We st uh, stopped last week on Hebrews chapter 10 where it talks about, and a lot of people get this scripture messed up, where it talks about if you willfully sin and reject oh, Jesus yeah. after you've known the truth, yeah. there is no other sacrifice for you right. and you're going to face the wrath of God. Right. A lot of people believe, well, I got saved and I messed up, so when I messed up, then I, I guess I'm, I'm just lost. No. It's saying, here, willfully, you turn your back and you walk away from God. Right. God is not going to drag us kicking and screaming to heaven, church. Right. You've heard me say that many times. Right. But you choose to walk away from God and you reject the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that draws you to God. That's right. Now you're All of in here, it was the Holy Spirit that dealt in our heart that drawed us to God. Yeah. If you reject the work of the Holy Spirit, yeah. Then there's no way that God can save you. Right. You are lost right. and you choose to right. be lost. Sure. It's not God that did it. God don't send you to hell. You go to hell because you choose to go to hell. Okay? All right. Now, I want to pick up here. The race of faith is a marathon. I think someone said that one night. It's not a sprint. Right. We, we want to get saved and we want to live a life to where. Nothing ever bad happens to us. We just live a, a, a good life and everything just hunky-dory all the time. No, we live in a fallen world, church. We still live in this flesh. And we're going to have attacks. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Okay? And he said, your faith overcometh the world. You use your faith against the things the enemy throws at you. You use your faith against things your flesh throws at you. But you have to use your faith to overcome these things. He said, no weapon formed against you prosper. He never said that weapon wouldn't be formed. He just said they won't prosper if you apply faith to the situation. You hear what I'm saying tonight? Okay? The race has to be a sustained effort over a long period of time. When a baby's born... It doesn't just jump up out of the mother's womb, take off, running, talking, and just everything. No. It's a process. When you get born again, you're a baby Christian. Yeah. You've got to learn how to rethink. Come on, man. All our life, we've had stinking thinking. All right, come on. Most of our thinking was negative. Right, and God says He wants to renew our minds yeah. to what He says about the situation. Come on, man. What He says yeah. about it. Okay? There's a lot of people out there who still don't like me. A lot of people still can't believe I'm a pastor. They can't believe my life has changed. But I can't worry about what they say. I've got to worry about what God says about me. Okay? Some people will never accept the fact that you change. Okay? But I have to depend on what God says. Because when I stand before God, I'm going to stand before Him naked. And I'm going. To, he's going to be the one that's going to judge me, not what people say or people think. I told you this a couple weeks ago, and I hope I get it right. I have to value your opinion before I'm going to worry about your criticism. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Good word. Amen. Amen. Now, endurance is a necessary quality of faith. We want to pray about it. We want God to move, and it's all said and done. No. You're over here, and you're believing God for something. You begin to exercise your faith to get what God has yes, promised you. And the, the bridge between your asking and your receiving is patience. Okay? 
And I know about, most people don't like the word patient. We want it, and we want it now. We go to McDonald's, and, and we get upset. They don't have our food ready by the time we get to the second window. Yeah. And then we grab about fast food. Yeah. Amen? Lord. I was listening to Robert Morris this morning, and he said that the world, and it is, it's true, the world is training us to say yes. Not so much no. Yeah. And he said, I go through the drive through I want my chicken salad, and they ask me, You want some fries with that? Uh -huh. And he said, Why well, do? Yes. Uh -huh. And he said, They ask me, You want a pie too? Yes. yes. <laughs> and he said, What if my chicken salad? Uh -huh. And he said, But that's the world we're living yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. We want God to be the magic genie. We rub the magic lamp, say the magic word, and all of a sudden, two feet perform. It's not that way, church. Josh? You know, uh, me and my brother, we were going to, you know, like McDonald's when we're in a hurry or something like that, and sometimes they'll make the burger really good. And you're like, yes, it's really good. And then other days, they just slop it on there and get a pile of mayonnaise on the side of your burger. <laughs> and then we're sitting there cursing it. It's like, ah, not actually cussing. It's just like complaining about it, or they burn the, the patty. And then we sit there and give thanks to God. <laughs> you know, I've said this before, and it's kind of long. A lot of people are complaining, why doesn't God bless my finances? Well, if I was to come up to you, say I come up to Sister Beverly, and I pull my gun out, and I stick it in your back and tell me, give me all your money. And she gives me all of her money. Then I turn around and say, now I want you to bless me. That's what we're doing to God. So you, again, you give what belongs to God, and God will make sure you're taking care of it. Amen. All right, let's turn to Luke chapter 8. I'm going to say, we'll try to finish this up. Josh is going to be teaching next Wednesday night, so I'm going to try to finish it. Okay? okay? Luke chapter 8, verse 11. We're talking about the seer, seed sowing the, so the sower sowing the word. He said, The parable is this the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, and cometh the devil and take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. There are people that are going to hear the word of God in the church house today. And as soon as you go out those doors, he's going to create some kind of situation. He's going to do something to you in your life to where he's going to steal the word. He's going to take it out of your heart. You're going to get so caught, caught up with something, being mad at somebody or upset about a situation or whatever, that he's going to steal the word that you heard out of your heart. And he said, they on the rock are they which when they hear the receive with joy, word with joy, but have no root, which for a while believe in a time of temptation and fall away. There's a lot of people that hear the word, they hear the same words you hear, but they don't let it take no root in their yeah, lives. Okay? Right. And because they have no root, when trials, when temptation, when things come, they lose what they have. You come here, get on a high, oh, God moved Sunday morning, he was awesome, and then he promised me this, and he did all this stuff, and it was just awesome, and go out the doors, and you get fired tomorrow, and all of a sudden, you lost what you had yesterday. Mm -hmm. You hear, boy, that quiet me, didn't That's you? That's good, man. All right. A lot of people get this, oh, I, I heard a word, man, I get you. It was awesome. But like I say, you go out into life, and all of a sudden, the devil comes along, you don't have no root. You know, like a like a, a plant, a plant that's just been planted. When the wind comes along, you can blow it over. Yeah. But that plant that's been there for a while, mm -hmm. it's got some roots in the yeah. ground. Yeah. The wind may blow it, and that's it may right. bend, yeah. but it's not going to break. Okay. Yeah. And he said, "And they which fell among thorns, and they which, when they have heard the word, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection." So many times we let the cares of this world. We let the things of this world choke the word out of us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You can go around and begin to confess what God says about your situation, about your life, about yes. your family, and all of a sudden the devil will create a situation or he'll get your eyes on something else That's that looks right. really good, and all of a sudden you don't no longer, you're no longer speaking the word of God. You start talking negative again. You start talking unbelief. So what has he done? He just choked the word out of you. Okay? Listen, the devil, and Judy said this, I've said this, 
The devil doesn't want your stuff. He wants your faith. Yes. Okay? Yes. The devil don't need my pickup. He don't need my house. He wants my faith. Okay? Last one, verse 15. But on the good ground, say good ground. Good ground. Are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. Yes, God. And bring forth fruit with patience. Amen. You know, a farmer doesn't go out there and just throw ground on the seed, come back tomorrow and say, Whoo, I got a harvest. <laughs> he throws a seed, he fertilizes, he washes yes, he it, does. he weeds it. And over a period of time, seed time harvest. harvest. He gets a harvest. Most of us, we want to sow something and we want to reap it right away. Right. It doesn't happen that way. And there's sometimes some bad things we sow and we reap some of those real quick too. Go ahead. I was blessed. My sister planted a garden. <laughs> I was so blessed. She got out there and sweat and dug full weeds. All this stuff and we called it. You want to pick up, you want this, you want that. Oh yeah, I can run over there and pick. Everything's done for me. I mean, she just was just, she didn't cut the cars in the Say something, you're going to live in houses you can build and, and, and yeah. reap uh, yes. crops that you didn't sow. <laughs> Amen. Listen, it's okay to laugh in church. God has a sense of humor. You don't believe what the person sitting next to you. Amen. All right, go up. Uh, he also tried to prepare the disciples, and you don't have to turn there, it's a real small short scripture, but write it down. Matthew 10, verse 22. And he said, You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Yeah. Church, it's not how you start the race, it's how you finish the race. Okay? A lot of us, we lose out because we, right in the middle of the day, we want to give up and quit and go back. My question is, go back to what? To what? I know what I came out of. I don't want to go back to doing drugs. I don't want to go back to drinking. I don't want to go back to being so selfish that it's all life is all about me. Yeah. It's time like the, the Hebrew, or Hebrew children, they wanted to go back to Egypt after God brought them out. They've been in bondage 400 years and he brought them out of the bondage. They get out in the desert. It didn't work out quite like they thought it should. And so they wanted to go back to Egypt, back to the bondage. And a lot of times, God will deliver us, bring us out of the world, out of the things we're in bondage to, and He'll carry us here because things are not working out. We didn't get a prayer answer. God didn't move, didn't do this. Then we want to turn around and go back. Go back to what? Bondage? What? 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 If it was so good, why didn't we stay there? Ah, the first place? Amen? Oh, I'm going to go back and this will be different. Listen. The definition of insanity is doing the same things the same way and expecting different results. Okay? If you if it happened that way before, it's going to happen that way again if you keep doing things that way. You've got to let God change you, church. And it's not a mental thing. It's a heart thing. God wants to change your heart. Okay? He wants to renew your mind, but He wants to change your heart. I said this Sunday morning, you can take a pig, bring him into your house, wash him, clean him all up, Paint his little toenail, put bows on him, spray him down with perfume, make him look really good. Open your door, guess what that pig's going to do? He's going to find a mud hole. Why? Because his nature wasn't changed. His heart wasn't changed. There's people sitting in church houses all the time. Their hearts not changed. They came and they merely assent to what God said, but their hearts not changed. God wants to change your heart. Amen. And God doesn't, listen, God doesn't judge you like man judges you. Thank God. Amen. God says, I look at the heart. He judges your heart. Why did you do what you did? Yeah. God. God, if you read your word and it doesn't affect you spiritually, emotionally, affect your heart, and you just keep reading and just nothing changes, something's wrong. Amen. Amen. I mean, something is absolutely wrong. Because I know I have done that before. I've been in my word, and I've read this, read that, and I'm thinking, 
I'm just not getting nothing out of this. The Holy Spirit told me, yeah, it's all you. <laughs> Come on. And so I had to go back. Because sometimes we really emphasize, we've got to be in this book. And we do need to be in this book. We yes. So we've got to pay attention to yeah. what's in there. And the biggest of thing is God is not going to change your heart. It's not like he's going to drag you to heaven to be extreme. You're going to make that decision on The thing is, you'll never know what God has promised you if you don't read the word. That's right. This is this is your guideline. This is every, this if you want to know God, this is how you know God. And he wants to change your life. He wants to change it for better. People say, Oh, I can't serve God a bunch of do's and don'ts and all that. Listen, those do's and don'ts have kept me out of a lot of trouble. Yeah. Amen. By doing what this says, it saved me a lot of heartache. You don't get married, divorced as many times as I did, and, and and be walking with God. No, it was me doing my own thing, my own selfishness, and doing things my way. And when God changed my heart, and then he put us together, now 37 years later, we're still together because God is the ah, centerpiece. I have my way, she has her way. Yeah. All the time. But it's God that makes the difference. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm talking. Yeah, um, well, what she said is when I read the Bible, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me, but then um, when you come to uh, Bible studies like this, you remember something you read earlier in the Bible, and then things will start to make sense. You have yes. to read it first. And then, uh, as I was telling James and Julie the other day, like, um, yeah, that, that's what we have to do. Uh, I read the Bible, and then um, I, I can start to understand things. Even in your own life, you see something happening in your own life. You can relate it to that. That's when it will start making sense. When I, when I first opened the Bible up, all those, Jesus didn't talk in King James English, okay? No wrong thing. But all those these and thous and all that symbolism stuff, I did not understand it. And so I asked God, I asked the Lord, show me. And the Holy Spirit began to show me. He, he said, he'll lead you and guide you in all truth. This is truth. Okay? And he began to reveal. The Bible says the natural man, the things of God to the natural man are foolishness. Because he can't understand them because they were spiritually discerned. So many people try and read the Bible with their minds instead of their hearts. Okay? You have to let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what's in there. If you'll ask him, he will. And I begin to read the word, and all of a sudden it started making so much sense. And I begin to see things that jump. Even now, I'll read a scripture that I read before, and all of a sudden something jumps out at me. That's the Holy Spirit showing me. Okay? But if you try to understand God with your mind, you're going to be so confused. You'll never figure God out. Because about the time you think he's going to go this way, he goes that way. But you've got to let the Spirit of God lead you and guide you and show you. Okay? Matthew 24, verse 13. Back at verse 12. It says, Because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Church, because of what's going on in the world today, there's going to be a lot of people they are going to let their hearts get hardened. And they're going to get cold toward God. It's sad. The next generation doesn't know God like we know God. They don't have the things that we have taught and had. And each generation is getting farther and farther away from God. Yes. Their hearts are getting more and more full. Society is all about, well, you're right and your rights. It's not, everybody can't be right. There has to be a standard that everybody has to live by. I'm going to throw this out there. This is not even part of my Bible study. I read or heard of something. There's an actress. No, she's a singer. And she decided that she is neither male nor female. She's non-binary, whatever that means. I'm thinking, go look in the mirror. God made you a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you say I'm not a woman, you're still a woman. Yeah, no, don't this is how crazy the world is that we're living yeah. in. You it. Amen? Yes. Yes, sir. I, think I, I think it was on CNN I heard them say it one time. It's just like the, the mentality is like my truth is different than your truth. And, and that's, that's the thing. It's okay for them to believe the way they believe, but we're not supposed to believe the way right. we believe. Right. They want to cancel out everything we believe, and we're supposed to start believing like them. Yep. 
I'm never going to quit believing this. I know. I've seen God do too much in my life, my family's life, and I just, you're never going to be, you know, it's like somebody's being healed by God, and somebody says, oh, that don't happen nowadays. That was back in the apostles' day. If you've been healed by God, nobody's going to talk to you. That's my love. I know. He said, but if you endure to the end, that means you're going to put up with some stuff. It's not going to be easy. We talked about it last time. The prize, the end result is definitely worth it. Okay? You don't want nobody to go to hell. And hell is real. People say, oh, we're going to go down and we're going to party down. Well, the devil sold you a bill of goods. <laughs> he ain't, there's no good in him. There's no good going to come from him. And when you get to hell, he's going to start you. He can't hurt God, so he's going to hurt God's people yeah. as much as he can. God's creation as much as he can. Okay? All right. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 6, Amen. verse 11. He said, we desire that every one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope and to the end. You need to be consistent. God is faithful. He's consistent. We need to be consistent. You need to remain faithful. That doesn't mean you're not going to stumble. That doesn't mean you're going to have a, a hard time or a bad time or a bad day. It just means you've got to be consistent with God. When you do fail, when you do make a mistake, get back up. Ask God to forgive you and keep on going. The devil's only got you when you stay down and don't get back up. Okay? Paul wrote that the eternal life would be given to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immorality. Immortality, I'm sorry. Therefore, endurance is required for successfully running this race. And he said, we've got to look unto Jesus. Our focus has got to be upon the Lord as we run this race. Right. You might look around and glance around at everybody else, but you need to keep your eyes on God. Yeah. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. When you're going through a difficult time, look what he went through. Yeah. And realize we're not having to do what he did. Right. Thank God he did it for us. Amen. Amen. This is, a, this is a formula for spiritual success. If you want to be distressed, look within. If you want to be defeated, look back. Let me say something to you. Which direction do you want to go? You want to go forward to what God has for you, or you want to go back to what you've been doing? If you keep looking back, wherever you focus, that's the direction your body is going to go. Okay? So, if you want to be defeated, look back. If you want to be distracted, look around. And I'm not picking nobody on the back row, but somebody said something the other day about sitting on the back row of the church, and uh, everything that goes on in front of them is a distraction to them. Yeah. If you're sitting in the front row, you don't see any of that exactly. stuff going on. Come on it's not a distraction. Exactly. And many times, but when the Holy Spirit's trying to move, do something, Somebody's up moving around doing this, doing that, and it causes a distraction. And you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. He said, if you want to be dismayed, look ahead. If you want to be delivered, look up. Amen. Amen. That's good. Josh? Yeah, when you were mentioning about the, if you're looking in that direction all the time, that's where you're going to go. I think it was you that gave a sermon the other day, or maybe it was last year. It was about, uh, about Lot and how his family camped outside of Sodom and Gomorrah. And every time he opened his tent, there's the city. Every time he went to bed, there's the city, and it's just facing toward. It. So it's like when you wake up in the morning, what are you seeking? And when you're going to bed at night, what are you seeking? So we need to look forward to God, right. and not to the things of the world. You know, even even this at night, when you get ready to go to bed, if you sit and watch the news and then try to go to sleep, or if you put on some praise music or a Christian station or something like that, look at the difference it makes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Who had their hand up? You were talking about uh, looking ahead and getting this made. Uh, I went through Marine Corps basic training, and what, like towards the end, we go on this hike, and uh, it was kind of foggy. The, the, we're going up the, they call it the Reaper hike, and we go up this huge hill, and it's got a lot of ridges on it. 
kept thinking, okay, if we could just make it up to this bridge, we'll be fine. And then, no, because we couldn't see what was ahead. Because we were focused on the point we were at instead of focusing on the final goal. So, you know, we get past some of the fog and we realize there's still like three, three or four more ridges to climb. <laughs> and, and, the, and the thing is, if we keep worried about what might happen, you're not going to enjoy what is happening right, right now. Right. That's a story of the little red engine, you know, who, who thought it could, kept thinking it could, thinking it could, thinking it could, thinking it could. And after a while, he made it, he saw the finish line. He said, now I know I can, I know I can. A lot of times we can't see the finish line, but if we keep thinking, and I know I can keep the faith that you're saying because he could have been distracted by everybody that passed him. I'm sure many times people pass him up and they say, hey, I'm like, you're going to make it. See you later. You know, you're not going to be stuck or whatever. You're going to get out of gas. But he kept thinking, I'm going to make it no matter what. He wasn't distracted by what they said. Right. He kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Right. And finally, he made it to the finish line. And that's the way God wants to do. We're going to endure some things, of course. He says, may not be affliction of the righteousness. Right. But let me tell you something. God has delivered me out of every trial and tribulation that I've gone through. God has delivered me. Amen. Yea, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. Thou art and thou it covers me. Hallelujah. So when we're going through our trial and we put him first, yes. God will always lead us to the promised land. And yes. guess what? And we're always victorious. We Amen. never Amen. lose a yes. Now, He is letting him lead That's right. Yes. Okay. So many times, God will try to tell us, don't go this direction. Well, I like this. I, I can, I got this. I don't worry about this. I got this, God. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Then we get over here, we find ourselves in the mess. Oh, God, help me! And thank God He's merciful. He does sometimes. Sometimes He lets you walk on through what you're going through, so you won't go through it again. Amen. Yeah. Do I have a hand up? We missed nobody. All right, Church uh, Colossians chapter three. I know I'm kind of going fast tonight, but I, I really want to try to finish this up. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to read this to you from the Living Translation. So since you became alive again, so to speak, when Christ arose from the dead, now set your sights on the rich treasure and joys of heaven, where he sits beside God in a place of honor and power. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Don't spend your time worrying about things down here. Yes, you should have as little desire for this world as a dead person does. Yes. Your real life is in heaven with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is our real life, comes back again, you will shine with him and share in all of his glories. You know, so many times when we lose a loved one, we grieve, and we should grieve, because you lost someone. Right. But we really did if, if you're a Christian, you didn't really lose anybody. It's just a temporary separation because yeah. you're going to spend all eternity with that person if you maintain your walk with God. But so many times... We, we grieve and we want the people to come back. Listen, if we really understood heaven, you'd never want anyone to come back. This is the goal we're all striving for. This is a place that God has prepared for us. God has prepared for us. And it's selfish for us to want them to come back. Come back in this world of suffering. When they're there, there's no pain, there's no sorrow. They got a brand new body. Amen. We're in the presence of Almighty God. Okay. Jesus ran this race also, church. And he's already gone. I'm trying to summarize here. He's already gone into the Holy of Holies. He's already torn the veil. And he's already made a way for you and I. In the Old Testament, remember, only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies, the place that God resides. And if he had sin in his life, they would tie a rope around his ankle and put a little bell on it. And if he quit hearing the bell, they would drag him out because he dropped dead because he had sin. Right. Well, thank God we don't have to. Jesus made a way where we can come boldly into the presence of Almighty yeah. God, where yeah. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. Amen? Amen. He endured everything he endured for the joy that was set before him, church. He realized by doing what he did, by suffering what he suffered, it was going to open the door for 
many, many, many people to be saved. Many, many people to spend eternity with God Almighty. Amen? And listen, he endured a lot of things. Even here on this earth, when he walked on this earth, they tried to throw him off a cliff one time. He just walked through the crowd. They accused him of all kinds of things. They even accused him of, of being able to cast out demons and devils and stuff like that because he had the power of the devil operating through him. And then they also uh, tried to trap him so they could arrest him. So he, he went through a lot of hostility. And you and I as a Christian, especially in the world we're living in today, you're going to go through a lot of hostility. Yeah. Listen, you've got to realize, don't take it personal. The spirit that's in the world does not like the spirit that's in you. When people come against you, they're not just coming against you. They're coming against the God that's in you. That's right. Come on. Okay? So don't take it personally. All right? Meditating on our Lord will prevent us from becoming weary and discouraged in our soul. When you feel like giving up, just remember all that. He, he, prayed, he paid such an awesome price so that you and I could have... An abundant life here Amen. and an eternal life with him there. Yeah. And when you want to get up, get, get discouraged, give up, don't let the temporary cost you the eternal. Oh, because of what you're going through now, the hard times you're having now, well, I just want to give up. You're going to give up and lose out on all that he has promised us over here. You're going to, you're going to lose the walk that you have with him right now. Listen, most of us, we're in the trouble we're in because of what we've done. The choices we made. We want to blame. Listen, we want to blame everybody else. It's starting the Garden of Eden. Adam said, "It's that woman you gave me." The woman said, "It's the devil that made you do it." We're always trying to blame everybody else. You'll never be a free person until you take the responsibility. I have made some bad choices. I have made some bad decisions. And when you when you deal with the truth, God will freely deal with you. Okay. All right. He said, those who wait upon the Lord shall not grow weary nor faint. Yeah. And when he says talking about waiting on God, church, he's not talking about sitting down, okay, God, whenever you're ready. No. He's talking about keep on serving God. Keep on doing what God's told you to do. Keep on being a good servant. Finish the course he's given you to run. Yes, okay? That's right. And he said, he will energize you. He will charge you up. He will cause you to grow strength. <coughs> Brenda? But Pastor, when you do stumble and you do fall and you repent and get back on the road, you're clean slate, you're good to go again. And, you know, we all sin and we all fall short. Amen. We but all as win. long as we keep getting back up and That's saying, right. I'm going forward and, you know, learn from your past, like you said, learn from your past. Amen. 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 The show is so many times when we stumble and fall, we don't forgive ourselves. Right. You gotta forgive your if God's willing to forgive you for it, you need to forgive yourself. Other people may never forgive you. But if God's willing to forgive you, now he's the one I'm gonna stand before, now he's the one I'm gonna give account to, then forgive yourself. Yeah, that's right. Come on, Chris. Okay? Josh had a comment. I was just Josh, saying, I was gonna say, um, how you were talking uh, if you're trying to blame someone else, God can't forgive you for that mistake. So and he wants to forgive you. Yes. You're the only one that doesn't want to forgive you. Yeah. Or the other person that you think wronged you. Amen. But when you take that responsibility on you, it opens up God's power to forgive you. Right. Right. Listen, everybody, I don't care who you are, you're just one knee from making things right with God. I don't care if you're a Christian, not a Christian, whatever mistakes you made, whatever you've gone through in life, if you'll bow a knee to him, ask him from a sincere heart, God will forgive you. He'll wash you, cleanse you in the blood of Jesus Christ, and you'll be a brand new baby in him. Yes. Listen, all those things that you did, you come back to God five minutes later and say, you know, what about this? God says, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to cast you for you. This is the rest. I want to forgive you. I want to forgive you. Don't go fishing for it. Okay? God wants to forgive us more than we want to forgive ourselves. Right. I've made some horrible mistakes, stupid mistakes, selfish mistakes, even after I was saved. But God still forgives me. Man sometimes won't, but God does. Joy, I'm sorry. 
John does really press there. You know, the truth is, is because we cannot at all, I don't care how smart we are, we really cannot grasp eternity. We just, we just we can't do it. We've never faced it. We've lived so many years and we've died on. God is well aware of eternity. And he wants us more in heaven than we even want to be there. And that's true because he knows the price this child is going to pay if they don't get to heaven. And I mean, you would want that. You would wish that on one of your kids. You just thought we're not wanting to do that. You wouldn't. So I really believe with all my heart that sometimes we, we forget, you know, like Brenda had said a couple of things. We forget God loves us so much that he really, really is holding, I believe, holding back for to get the last one that he can get because he, this world is going to be just out of it when the church is taken out of here. It really, really, really is. I pray God be found worthy to give some go with him. It's, he says it's not his will that anybody should perish. And the Bible even says God didn't create hell for mankind, he created the devil and his angels. The church is a reality. It's it's sad. Listen, this Bible has been proven historically, geographically, prophetically, every way you can imagine, it's been proven, proven, proven. There is a heaven, there is a hell. The devil will tell you it's not a reality, but it is. And God's not against you, he's for you. Your, our choices, our free will is what gets us in trouble. We deny, we reject everything he tries to do in our life. And then we won't blame God. God, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? He's done it. He's given us his name. He's given us his blood. He's given us the power. He's given us authority. But we're supposed to use it. If you don't use it, it's not going to do you any good. When the enemy attacks you, you've got to use what God's given you to overcome the enemy. Overcome yourself. I say, God, not in heaven, wait for you to mess up, hit you with a baseball bat or a lightning bolt. He wants to encourage you. When you fall, he's, right, he's the first one there reaching down to pick you up. But you've got to take his hand. Amen. Amen. Some of us are so full of pride, we want to take God's hand when we fall. Right, I got it. I'll handle it. I made my bed. I'll fix it. I don't know about you, but I made a lot of bad mistakes. I couldn't <laughs> fix them. It took God to fix my life. Yep. Amen. 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 Run the race required both negative and positive elements. We must lay a thing, lay aside things which would hinder us. Think about what what is it in your life that's really keeping you from being all that God wants you to be? And that's what you need to work on. That's what you need to concentrate on. That's what you need to ask God. Help me. I can't do this myself. Help me get rid of this. Help me let go. Help me lay this thing aside. Amen. Positively, we must keep our focus on Jesus who's made our salvation possible. In both cases, the Word of God, the Bible is crucial. For in it, we learn that what sort of things that we must lay aside. The Bible tells us the things that's going to hinder the race that we're going to run, church. For in it, we learn about our Lord, what He endured, and how His example should inspire us. Have you lost your endurance? Have you grown weary and run the race? Then let the Bible help you examine the baggage that should be left aside. What's keeping you from Hearing God like you want to hear God. What's keeping your prayers from being answered? What's keeping you from allowing God to change you? Amen? What did you quite a minute, didn't it? Let the Bible help you learn about Jesus and let his example continue to help us with our perseverance. Run the race to win. Yeah. Don't just run the race. Come on now. Run the race to win. Amen? I'm going to leave you this scripture here. We're going to close on this. Hebrews 10, 36. For we have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. You've got to be patient. Once you've done what God asked you to do, then be patient, trust God, believe that God's going to do what He says He's going to do in here. Now, it may not be in your time or your season. Right. I like my song. Help is on the way. It may not be. It may be at noonday. It may be at midnight. But he's never late. He's never early. It may not be the way we want it, but God always does what he says he'll do. Amen? All right. Give God some praise and glory. Amen.